Bible to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let's start from there before we now head to causes. It's a very simple thing. But if you see causes it can bring, look at that. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thy house. Least thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it and thou shalt utterly abhor it for it is what? A costing. Is this thing an appeal or a command? Is it a command? Good. Now listen. If it is a command, you either obey it or you are disobeying it. Are you listening to me? So many Christians quoting a child of God cannot be cursed. They are cursed here by this command. This is not an appeal. If you go to their houses, there are so many accursed material, so many uncalled books they used when they were in the war. Today they are born again. They have not removed them. The Bible says in the book of Acts of the Apostles that when the Christians, early Christians, when they got born again, they gathered all the curious books and materials and did what? And bought them. And the Bible said the church grew. Some of you looking at me now, Agana, if we go to your house, we will see the traditional of four satanic priesthood in the backyard of your family. We will see OG. I went to a sister's house and she decorated her city room with brooms. A special one kind of broom. And you know it's a mystical material. It's a witchcraft material. Yes. Go and read it. It's there in my book dealing uh, with witchcraft oppression. It's a witchcraft material. It's a witchcraft material. And you see them, they put, if I, if I come into your house and I see strange brooms, in the first place, you have made my spirit to begin to suspect you. They bring a curse. Some, some I went to a brother's house, it was the book of, a gray, of the gray message. I remember one of her sisters, she's a white woman. She was, she's from UK. Uh -huh. When she came back to Nigeria, I taught this lesson and she cleared her houses, but she forgot there was one book she didn't discover. And according to her, sometimes she will be having oppression and she's a prayerful woman. She's a very holy woman of God. And then other times she was going to having strange things were happening in her house. So one day she decided to seek the face of God to find out what is going on. And according to her, she was praying. She saw herself in her library. She and her husband shared a library. And according to her, here was a huge dark man dressed in complete black. And he said to the man, what are you doing here? Get out of my house. The man said, this is my house. So she said, no. And screamed and, saw, and, and felt that she was being strangulated. When she wanted to force her tell the spirit, get out of my house. It's like she was being strangulated and she was choking and woke up, sweating. She came to, early in the morning, before 6 30, she was already in my house. I said, Chima, I said, What is it? She said, I don't understand. Something is wrong. She told me this story and I told her, Mother, there is a strange book in that room, in that library. She said, It's not true. That she cleared the whole of that house when I told her. I said, Go and check again. He said, Chima, because you said so, because I followed her up. He said, because you said so, let me go back. She went back, went through the whole of that books one by one, only to discover that one of her books on yoga was there. And then she had to remove the book. And that was the last time she had that experience. Am I communicating? So listen. Some of these materi are cost materials. All the materials used in serving Satan. The three-legged chairs our forefather or your grandfather was using to serve his idols as shrine. All those things are cost materials. You need to get rid of them. They bring a curse. The Bible said they make you a cost thing. A sister, very wonderful sister, I don't want to call her name, that lady 
Why, why did the Satan attack her? She began to even that one was that she now was the one talking when she was manifesting. The minister was surprised because two of them were ministering together. An assistant pastor ministering with you suddenly started manifesting. He turned and commanded the thing. Who are you? Who are you? He said, What does she have any of her property? He said, He has a property, her property. He said, What is it? The sister was the one talking to me. He said, She just discovered herself, raising her two hands in the air, and was shouting, Nza, 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 Nza. And I asked her, Do you have Nza? He said, That thing has been hanging on the wall of her bedroom for years. She used it when she was in the wall for dancing. Huh? Have you look at the way they are looking at me and I see they are holy. They are all quiet. Go and check the inza. The one age of Ebu Amala. Ebu Egedege. Go and remove them from your house. They are, the Bible calls them accursed materials. They make that person a costing. That's what the Bible says. So, like, you discover that what you need is not prayer. I went to, a, I visited a woman, myself and uh, some of my workers some years ago. This man, this woman, this family is very close to a, a bishop friend of mine. And they called him. What happened? This morning, the son suddenly became mental. Suddenly became mental. And we went there. We prayed in the, we were praying upstairs. They took us the upstairs to the room, which was like a privilege. And while we were praying, the Lord said, go down. Check the film. The young man was watching downstairs. We went down and there and saw a dragon film. I hope you know those the pictures. Those say, say dragon film. And the Lord said, this is the problem. And we came back and asked the madam, your son watches a film, a dragon film, true or false? He said, yes, she bought it. I said, what for? What does the dragon represent? You know, some of you, you go to the market, you buy a dragon polo because you, the money is your own. No problem. Who are you celebrating? That dress is a costing. You can as well buy a, a biophonet, the goat with three, two horns. Or you don't know that that's a symbol of satanism. I am asking you. Uh-huh. And you know, immediately that thing was brought, the young man, we got him to renounce it, separated him from it. The young man became normal. Of course, the mother said, can we move everything, burn them? Because the young man is very uh, violent and had given them a test of their life. So having said so, I want us to sit down these seven days. Let's deal with causes. Nothing is as destructive as causes. And the painful thing is that I discovered that many people are laboring on varying degree of causes. And it takes a spiritual eye to understand the one that is happening to you. And some have gotten de have determined to live, like, live with it. But the truth is that it is never the plan of God for you. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. My Bible tells me in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. I'm reading from verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you what? An expected end. Brother, look up. All the causes are never from God. The Bible says, no pain, no torment. The plan of God is that you prosper, that you be in health. Who brings the, the pains? The Bible says Satan has come to steal, to destroy. So a lot of these pains was never the program of God. But Satan takes an advantage because we break the laws of God. We disobey God. We want to live in the world and use our freedom. God has given every creation the privilege of choice. 
There is no other creation on the world that God gave the privilege of choice. But he gave men the privilege of choice. And the result is that so many human beings use the choice anyhow. I have had all kinds of things. I have had Christians, they talk as if it's only, uh, as if we, we are teaching them that only Africans are cursed. Nobody has ever said so. And can I, be, can I tell everybody? White men, no matter how white, they, are, uh, they have family causes, generational causes. There is no kind of cause that is not in all parts of the world. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, Isaiah 45, verse 23, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall do what? Swear. Who is talking? God. If, I, if you look at this scripture, you discover that God is more or less saying, as long as I am God, as I live it, every knee must bow to me. And brother, if you understand that scripture, that scripture is clear. We cannot live in this world, in this earth, that Jehovah God created and refused to obey his word. We must submit to his word. Sometimes you, you see some people because they have material success. Some human beings, like poor man in Africa, will be talking about him as if he has succeeded. It's not success. You see a man, some, you see a woman, a white man, even if he's a president in his country, he doesn't have any child. Not one. What is his blessing? What did he come to the world? That's a cost life. Causes are real. So if you are in this earth, my brother, find any man that is living against the word of the law. There is a curse, if not directly, in the whole family. I hope you know the Bible says we should not oppress the weak, the less privileged. Am I right? Now listen. Here is a rich man, very rich man. I had this one today. Very rich man. And this rich man had a maid in the house. And because he's the rich man, the maid can't refuse him. Got the maid pregnant, aborted it. Second time, got the maid pregnant, aborted it. Third time, got the maid pregnant, they aborted it. I hope you're hearing me. And with so much pain, are you hearing what I'm saying? Intimidation on the poor girl. Made life difficult for her. And the guy needed a job. And you know what happened? That man one day drove away with his three daughters. A trailer miss came, killed three of them, including himself and the three daughters. Three abortion, three lives, three children. Is that not a case? No, I'm asking you. Maybe if you don't know, we'll go to the definition. Let's learn to, in this kingdom, we must learn to obey God. Open your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. So I'm going to read only verse 1 to 2 and verse 15. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. That the Lord your God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon thee. And overtake thee if thou do what? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. So number one, obedience. When you walk out of obedience to the word of the Lord, his commandment, the next thing will be what? Curses. Will be what? Curses. Read verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, all these curses, whether you speak in tongues, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. When you now look at the list of curses, they are not less than 64. But if you read from that 2 down to verse 14, 
blessings of obedience. Tell your neighbor, say, obey the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say, submit to his word. Submit to his counsel. Very important. Having said this once, my brother, I want to tell you, let's look at what is a curse. Let's define a curse. Causes are supernatural forces that influence or oppose people's lives or property for evil. That's a curse. A curse we make a man. He is very qualified. He will always be given the job, but he never gets it. Near success syndrome. Because there is an invisible force that is opposing his life. Human beings will admire him. Special appointment, special assignment will be given to him. But something that is supposed to bless his life, they will forget him. That's a curse. A curse is an invisible force. You can't see it with your eyes. But the reality of his opposition, the hard work, is unmistakable. Is somebody hearing me here? The hard work of the curse is what? Unmistakable. You look close, you see that the man is going through what we call fruitless hard labor. From January to December, this man is struggling. From January to December, he is always there and never there. That's a curse. Next year, and you know the funny thing, when a curse is working against a man, particularly people that are sitting on their senses, every day they keep on believing it will be better. I met a young man. Somebody placed a curse. I was told against him 18 years ago. He went into the university, read law. He never finished reading law until the university canceled his admission. And today, he every day, this is an exceptionally intelligent young man. The language is exceptionally intelligent. Every day, sitting on his senses, he believed it to be well. I don't need to be, uh, must everybody go to church and pray before he can succeed. Today, he's 39 years. He's not yet married. His dear brother is married. Life is struggling. I had to sit him down. And I said to him, sit down, my brother. You can't fight this thing. This thing is an invisible force. Human intelligence. If you use human intelligence to follow a course, it will make you a mockery. I know a man. He was a senior prefect of my school in secondary school. Throughout his stay, and while he was made the university, sorry, why he was made the secondary school uh, senior prefect was because he hardly came second. No, the man was exceptionally intelligent in everything. Accountancy was like he wrote the book of accountancy with a tukudo. Shorthand. He, when the lecturer has finished marking his shorthand, they say it is difficult to remove one mark from him. In those days, when those things were valued, Pitman, he passed Pitman as a student. Stage one and stage two. But that man went, finished, came back from the secondary school, went to university, came back and was working for a Wayek, a, a boy who didn't clear his Wayek. The boy said to me, that in fact, you see, I have to drink. Because I, I met the boy in Uniland. He was drinking Coke. And I asked him, look at your stomach, is swelling every day. Why not stop this thing? And the boy said to me, he said, Daddy, uh, I need to this Coke. You see the people working for me, they are older than me, and uh, I need to drink the Coke. And when I wear my tie and put on my coats, they need to respect me. <laughs> is somebody hearing me here? That's a person every day when the young man comes with his 504 and pack and waste time and the air condition will be doing and then the man will rush so that the man will rush down. Our, our big man is around. He will come down to welcome him 
Then he will now switch off the car, come out lousily, and give him his, uh, what's the name of that bag? Portfolio, briefcase. He will carry his briefcase, and then he will now will be following him. That's a mockery. That's a man who has died before he died. Go and solve your problem. Confront the problem. A cash can destroy. He can mire a man. Can destroy a man. He can reduce the intelligence of a man. Hear me, my brother. Beyond everything in this world, do your best to run away from a curse. Do your best to do what? Run away from a curse. A curse is very destructive. I remember a man in this town. I have said this before. Some of you here have heard it. They were opposing their pastor. And they were having a problem with this man. This pastor, yes, he didn't go to university. He didn't go to secondary school. But before he was 17 years, he was already a pastor serving God. I hope you are hearing me. He was a trader and God called him. He answered the call of God. Now the man, God has lifted him. All of them that were under him were lecturers at the College of Education. Uh, sorry, that time it was here, College of Education. Oka. And he was privileged to be pastoring Pentecostal Church in this town. And many of them we are looking at him with the eye of a non-graduate living big. So there was a hidden jealousy in their hearts. So the problem got to a level. Some of them now gathered together, wrote a petition against him to their headquarters. And the problem came. When the problem came, the financial secretary who supplied all the information they used in writing, when they brought up the matter about it, mentioned his case, he said, he just did his son like this. He said, leave him. He has finished his journey to heaven. That statement, I will show you as we define a case. It sounded ordinary. It was not ordinary. That's a case. A word is either a blessing or it's a case. He said, leave him. He has finished his journey to heaven. The, the man is in Oka here. Maybe hearing what I'm saying. Tina. And that was how that man's life crashed. Not long after, the doctors were looking into why the wife couldn't have a child. They said that one of the fallopian tubes of the wife has been damaged. That's number one. But nevertheless, they encouraged him and said, don't worry. With the one, the woman can still have her children. That was encouragement. And then, after all prayers, listen to me. Causes can frustrate prayers. You didn't hear, did you hear what I said? After many prayers, the wife took in. Guess where the pregnancy took place? On the, fallop, the remaining fallopian tube. What, that was what they call ectopic pregnancy. And damaged the remaining fallopian tube. So the man was angry. Everybody tried to cancel him. He refused. He forgot the curse. The man placed on him. He never went to make restitution. My brother, in this kingdom, learn to humble yourself to authority. Don't walk in arrogance. Pride is a destroyer. The Bible says, debase the proud. Even God also, he himself will resist the proud. So be humble. Our brother was doing gra, 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 gra. At the end of the day, they encouraged him to adopt. He refused. All kinds of suggestions he refused. The next moment he went and married a second wife and brought into the house and increased his trouble. And that's how, if you see him now, he would think he's my grandfather. I thought somebody's hearing me here. Am I talking to somebody here? Touch your neighbor say, don't kill yourself before your time. That's the case. Causes are evil words. Causes, they are negative sentences. Package to injure. Package to destroy. They can destroy a living thing. They can destroy a non-living thing. They are negative sentences. A girl, a bishop told us that the sister used to be naughty with the mother when she was young. And I as we are teaching you are the examples, I'm giving the examples so that you can think. The sister was young. 
And as a young girl, she was naughty to the mother. And one day, when she was still less than 13 years, the mother said to her, when you go to deliver, you will realize that I'm your mother. That was, is that a blessing? The girl forgot it. Our brother bishop said he himself, all of them forgot it. The sister was having problem in every labor. Sometimes the child, she will be struggling in labor before they would deliver, the children would have died. One particular case, he was in London. After finishing a program, he was tired. Just to rest, God woke him up and said, start praying for your sister. He said, oh God, I'm tired tomorrow. He said, pray for her now, otherwise she'll be dead. She re he started praying. While he was praying, God showed him the sister was in labor. And has been in labor for about two days, the second day. And was already getting tired. He started praying. And the sister delivered. When he came back, he realized, he added two and two together. Realized what happened. Warn the sister. Go and make peace with her mommy. In fact, in one of the cases, the sister struggled with pregnancy. At the end of the day, the doctors, after all the battle, she delivered twin boys. All of them were dead. Causes. You see, I, am I talking to somebody here? I'm talking about causes. Whichever way, they are destructive. Pay attention to it. Don't leave it. A cause is the roadblock or call it a blockage, a limitation standing between you and success in life. That's what is a case. As long as he's standing there, he won't allow you to, uh, to be successful. He can't allow you to have a major breakthrough. Can't, he doesn't allow. It keeps a man's life limited. It keeps a, a sister distant from breakthrough. That's a curse. That's a curse. A curse is a supersonic dark cloud. A dark cloud covering and hindering the light from coming to a person or a family so that their star cannot shine. They, are, they have a wonderful star. They will receive prophecy. Nah, eh? Your star is wonderful. Even Akira, Akira, Maka. At the end of the day, nothing changes in their life. When you are going through that experience, you have a lot of beautiful prophecies around your life. And you don't look like the prophecy that is being given around about you. My brother and sister, deal with causes. Face the matter squarely. Can I tell you, the issue of causes did not start today. In fact, can I even tell you, it started in the book of Genesis. And by the way, God was the first person to pronounce a curse. In case you don't know, our God is a cursing God. And he's also a blessing God. He said, I place before you, choose, I place before you life and death. That's why, obedience or disobedience. So choose one. Life is a matter of choice. Is somebody hearing me here? Life is a matter of choice. I don't know what you have chosen. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the right way. The way of talking to God. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the right way. The way of talking to God. You should choose the right way. The right way of prayer. Today, a lot of destinies have been limited. So many frustrated, some destroyed. Why? Because of causes. So many people are laboring under varying degree of causes. Some of the causes are against an individual. Some causes are against a family. Some causes are against a business. Some causes. So they vary. Do you know there are families where you get there, you discover that that family demotes greatness. Every struggle to be a great man in that family never works. Why? There are causes. And unless those causes are broken, nothing happening, my brother. I said here that there are very degrees. I want you to know that, listen, some causes are stronger than others. Did you hear what I said? That somebody did a three days fast and broke his cough. 
Somebody can pray here today and break his own. Some other people may need another extra seven days to break their own. Why? They are not the same, my brother. I had, I listened to a tape today and I heard about a woman. Somebody had told her, he said, I will never allow you to have a normal child. The first child they gave birth to, they were, they had a, the child had a, a hole in the heart. The second child, he had eyes but cannot see. The third one, I don't remember again the complication. All of them, until she started praying the kind of prayer we are going to pray here this week. She now left her religious beliefs, started the prayer because her friend brought her. And when she started praying those prayers, the relation now came with the husband. What happened? They came with three eggs and came and said to her, please, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I place a curse on you. Every time you are pregnant, this, I use this egg to represent the child. I place curses over the child that it will never be normal. When I finish, I bury it into the ground. I did that. The three of this egg represented the three children that are abnormal. I want you to see how far the enemy can go to place a curse. And some of us, when you are asked to pray, lousiness, Christians take things for granted. A lot of Christians don't want to pay a price. They are looking for one great man of God. Eh? Quotation that will just touch your head. You say, amen, he's done, he's done, amen. Everything, no, they don't like that. Let me tell you about different ways cause is come. If you go to the book of, open your, get me Numbers chapter 23. Let's read verse 1 only. Numbers 23, look at verse 1. And Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven what? Rams. How many sacrifices are here? Huh? Fourteen. And not on the level ground, on the highest mountain. From where he will release the course and it will fall like a mighty rain. Torrential rain. And God saw the sophisticatedness and made sure it was never pronounced. I told you here about what happened. My, I, had, I used to have a curate that had a, one kind of funny doctrine from one fellowship he used to attend. And if he will be talking this way, he will be arguing the other side. Until one day, according to him, when I was teaching on warfare, he had his own ideas. And one day, as he was moving along the track road, he said he had. A mecca, a mecca, America, Egara. This America you went. You will come back empty handed. You will come back empty handed. Nobody, the road will block. As the man was issuing curses, he said he shouted, Blood of Jesus. That's a man before a forest shrine, a for, some forest power deities, carried a big cock, pronouncing curses on one young man in America. Probably in America, he had joined the OPOP people. He no more go to church. Yeah. And then, he, even the day he will go, he will go as if he's doing the person who brought him a favor. You know? I think he invited me. I came. I thank you. <laughs> you know, that's how many Christians behave. As if he was doing him a, a favor. Here was somebody with a mighty sacrifice hammering him with a curse. My brother, hear me. Some there are mysteries. What did I say? Say it better. Imagine, do you know that some curses, when they want to pronounce some curses, some of these villagers, you go for Christmas, you offend them. You go for Easter. And some of them are your parents. You don't honor them. The Bible says honor them. You should honor them. Follow them with wisdom. Somebody has helped you to bring you where you are. And you, you are so ungrateful. Ingratitude is your name. Second name. Listen. There is no scripture covering an ing ingrate. An ingrate. You must learn to give thanks for everything. And listen, we know how they will place the curse. Some of them, they will place the curse against you. 
using the four market days. On AK, they pronounce. On Oye, they pronounce. On Unkwa, they pronounce. What is the other one? On our four, they hammer it. Now they have hammered you from the four cardinal points. And you don't know. You think that one is ordinary. It's not like the other one. That's another sophisticated cause. Some others, you know how they pronounce? They pronounce the curse against you using the seven rays. What are the seven rays? You see it in my book, Dealing with Witchcraft Oppression. Seven rays are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday is ruled by a sun god. Moon, Monday by the moon goddess. When they follow it and tie you in all these different powers, you just come here and say, in the name of Jesus, it's done. Just utter your word. You are will in Jesus' name. Say amen. That's why your life has been confused. Are we sitting together? Listen to me. Do you know, some of them are so wicked that when they want to pronounce this curse, they pronounce it. Listen, I discovered that hiddens, some of them that never went to church, there, is, they must, they, there must be some lectures they receive in their covens. They do lectures in the covens. Because when you look at some of the knowledge and their mysterious way of acting, I am kojad. Isaiah 11 verse 12, the Bible says, there are four corners of the earth. Is that your Bible? Jer Psalm 74, verse 16 and uh, 17. The Bible tells us that there are what? The day is thine. The night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. And thou hast made the summer and the winter. They place the course are the different seasons of the year. And then they place the curse also using the four cardinal points. That's why you come at a crossroad. You will see a sacrifice. I pose up or not. They stand there, pronounce the curse. Anywhere you are in the world, that curse will locate you. Unless you have the divine covering of God. I thought somebody is hearing me. Are we sitting together? Can, I, can somebody get me Jeremiah, Jeremiah 49? C 35, let me, 36. Let me show you something strange again. They not only play the course at the four cardinal points, they also know, do you know the Bible recognizes four corners of the earth, recognizes the four winds, and there are also four angels of the four winds. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them towards all the winds. And they are sharp. So when they speak to the four winds, the wind, when it blows, do you know there are people, suddenly they felt a wind and their health changed. Some, after a particular wind passed through them, they had stroke. Have you had things like that? If you have not, come to my place. My people. That means the person was embraced by some spirits, and it is the next thing is stroke. It's a stroke. They, these guys are knowledgeable. I only went here to help all of us see that the causes are in degrees. Are in degrees. It was just somewhere near that speaker some years ago when we were doing miracle service. I met a sister. I went there. I laid hand on somebody. Then I was looking at her. I had a message and touched her. I went and touched her head. She slumped to the ground. Very tall sister. Slumped to the ground. I, I didn't even touch. I had it a little to touch the two neighbors. So I just went away. I'm cross over this side. The next day, she said, when she went back from that night vigil and went to sleep, while she was sleeping, she had a voice. And the voice said to her, 36 curses has been broken over you. How many? 36 curses. By one laying of hand. 
Apparently, the girl has suffered enough. And God was looking for somebody to help her. To cross her over. And she said, in the morning that day, she decided to get to their office. On getting to their office, they gave her some different uh, favor. This favor here. Favor here. She said she was not used to receiving favor in her life. She came out, decided to go to one other uh, office down that side. Uh, I mean, as she appeared, somebody saw her. Say, where are you going? She said. He said, jump in. Let me go and drop you. He said, are you? Is that you where? He said, no. It's not where I'm going, but let me go and drop you. The man carried her. She started crying in the car. The man became embarrassed. Ask her why. He said, all her life, that she doesn't receive any favor from anybody. And she's been living with it. Look, when you see human beings wear dress, so, so many are just to cover a lot of strange things. People have problems. Now, Joro, Aqua and I cover so many things. When some people talk, you cry. Ask my wife, one called me the other day. Why the person was, we were listening. I started crying. I began to cry. A brother, a brother, a brother gave me a book to edit for him. I read the book. What was there? This man is doing his 50th birthday. The first time he went to prison for doing a good work for the church. The church put him in prison, locked him. Because some people are jealous inside the church. Another, another group carried him, put him in prison. For 28 days, he was in prison. The same man, he made the church to hit, he gave a suggestion, and the church bought, didn't buy it initially. He compared and they bought it. They said, okay, you arrange it. He did it. That thing is giving the church billions of naira every year till today. And he himself, this year and last year, he has not been able to pay his children's school fees. I, I, I cried and cried. And I sent him a test. I said, my brother, I have been crying since I've been reading you. I have only read three chapters. I don't think I have the emotion, emotional strength to continue. And that's the truth. I can't continue. Please. He said that that's what he went through. That I should try. That he's waiting for the forward for his 50th birthday. My brother, a lot of people are under courses. And the young man, this same young man who I have invited him more than four times here. I told him, come. You are, the way I'm looking at you, everybody he come in contact with, he made them very rich. Made them millionaires. And yet, he can't maintain his car. And yet, he can't pay his children's fees. Is that a normal life? Something is wrong. And that thing did not stop today. It started from his birth. He, instead of being born at a proper age, he was born at the age of seven months in the womb. And where, the, where was he born? At a bus stop. The, wife, the mother was going somewhere and suddenly discovered that she couldn't hold the child. Women covered her at the bus stop. He was given back to. Trouble! Some people... Their problems started from where they were born through. If somebody tells you there is something like family, generational causes, you better don't listen to such empty placebo words. There are generational causes. If there are no generational causes, then the word of God is not true. I will visit God. If you read the book of, leave the book of Exodus 20. Let's go to Exodus 36. The Bible, God said, he said, I will visit the iniquity. I visit the iniquity. He said, I am God. Why? He visited the iniquity of the fathers of the children to the third and second and fourth generation of them that hate him. There, he was not talking about causes against idolatry. He was saying who he is. This is the nature of God. My brother, the God we serve, visited, he visits the iniquity of the fathers on their children. To the third and fourth generation. They are receiving one. I think by, I read it in one book. If I remember tomorrow, I'll bring the book. And read the thing. Terrible cause. And you know the funny thing. They have, their father committed this iniquity. Ten years. Nothing happened. It was, do you know, every, some causes they have what we call incubation time. 
That's why in my place, I see them bar and oboko, or whom one he call for. When the trouble was committed, the iniquity was committed, that's not when the judgment starts. Are we sitting together? Huh? Am I offended here again? Please, don't be getting offended. Listen to me, my brother. There are causes bring covering of darkness. And they hinder development. They hinder success. They hinder educational attainment. They hinder promotion. Notice that in some towns, communities that are very good in idolatry, yeah, they are known for idolatry. And the causes of idolatry and bloodshed because idolatry goes with bloodshed and wickedness. Nothing moves there. When you look at, go to such communities, they are known for producing most, the most powerful native doctors. And those particular communities that produce the most powerful native doctors, go and look. Their roles are hardly tired. One. Number two, their children, when people need a maid, when you need a housemaid, huh? when you need a housemaid, that's the places you go to hunt for housemaid. Those are the places. Why? Because they are cursed. And they are here making arguments. The one that was arguing yesterday don't even know the spelling of the word C. He doesn't, he can't spell C. Can't, I mean, his English is like from the gutter. They may be popular. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In fact, they are rather famous for producing house helps on skilled laborers. In the Oboro, when you go to Oboro, they cover the whole place. And they are, you discover that when you deal with them, they easily get provoked. The same mass spirit of anger, because anger follows the spirit of some deities that are popular in Africa. So when you see a sister, a brother, that has a strange anger like the one they brought the other day. Who was asking me to get involved? These are spirits. These are families where there is deep idolatry. Hear me. I don't care whether your father built the church in my town. I don't care how many times they go to church if they were sleeping there. But I want you to know if you have a deep anger, there is deep idolatry in your family. And if there is deep idolatry, there is bloodshed. And if there is bloodshed, there is wickedness. So, Start doing repentance before God. I thought somebody was hearing me. Some of them, when they get angry, yeah, eh? people will hide under the table. You know, there are men, when they are coming back home, when they get angry, the children will go under the bed and hide. Causes, they are more extensively wide. Hey, are you hearing me? Wider than you can imagine. Virtually all areas of creation can be cursed. Tell me what cannot be cursed. A land can be cursed. Yeah, a land can be cursed. A farm can be cursed. An estate can be cursed. A family can be cursed. Children can be cursed. And they will become a thorn in the flesh of their parents. I've seen a girl, or rather a boy. The mother invited me, and I went to see her. And the woman said to me, that she is the second wife. Since she was married in this family, she's been suffering in the hand of the, the first wife and the children. And then the only son he has, he suffered and was going to the forest to get palm fruits and break them into kernels, sell, and train this boy in school. And got money, sold certain things, sent the boy to Spain, as the boy was going, the, second, the first wife said to her, look at this, your son, as he's traveling. Admire him, admire him very, very well. Because as he travels, you have lost him. She said she went home and prayed. She prayed, oh. But can I tell you, she prayed because some of you are like that. When God has opened your eyes, show you a bad dream. When you wake up, instead of praying very well, the father, hey, this kind of thing. I cancel it in Jesus' name. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. And when the thing will hit, tsunami. But God warn you. 
The woman told her to his to her face. And she prayed careless prayers. One of those useless prayers. The boy went overseas and never called her again. Guess who talks with the, who the woman, the boy calls? The first wife. And according to her, when the son will call the first wife, the first wife will stay around his window to be discussing with the son so that you'll be hearing the discussion between him, between her and the first son. Listen to me. You better wake up. Better wake up. You cannot be struggling under the manipulation of a human being. You are alive, you are in pain, and somebody is mocking at your God. And you are not worried, you are not bothered. You are not, you don't get the knowledge that this God, He is the light that shines in darkness, and darkness cannot overstand. And He said to you, Fight a good fight. Why would you fight? Why have you decided to live a second class as a second class citizen? When God has something better. My thoughts for you are thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you an expected end. I wish I can provoke somebody here. Because I know if you get provoked, everything around you will change. Everything around you will change. One of my daughters, she visited yesterday. There are things I know at times I keep quiet. Because she listened to me. It's not everything God says that we are supposed to tell you. They were here, committed, very committed. Suddenly, they, they disappeared. I kept quiet. The enemy began to attack them. But even different, even health attacks. But I thank God for the daughters. So when I saw her yesterday, said she will, God, he convinced her she's supposed to work as. In fact, I initially I tried to make it difficult for her because I wanted to be sure. And when she said, I said, it's okay. Hold my hand. She held. I said, Father, open her eyes. And God did. I said, God, reveal to her what is happening in the Father's compound. And she saw. My brother, the Bible said, we are not of them that draw back. We are of them that go forward and keep. The Bible said they draw back unto destruction. That's the Bible who and the word the Bible says scriptures cannot be broken. Scriptures, they cannot be broken. They can't be broken. See, the Bible says whoever put his hand upon the floor and take it back, he says he's no more qualified. Some of you, you start a war. At the point you almost conquer One year, year advice will come. Listen to me, who would have hindered David from taking his miracle of becoming a king? Do you know? His brothers. Satan will not attack you with a demon. It is a brother, a minister. And that's what will I hit you and dislocate you. The greatest battle I have had in this life and ministry. Are you hearing me? It is never from witches and hiddens there. No. Is from pastors or they ministers of God. They are the greatest problem I've had in ministry. Shake you like this that you almost begin to wonder whether this heaven is real. And you know the funny thing? When they scatter your life, they go, they go and do repentance and continue the, their journey to heaven while you are backsliding. So better be careful. Is somebody listening to me? Are we sitting together? Huh? Uh-huh. A lot of health problems, fertility problem, financial calamity. My brother, they are visible manifestation of causes. Causes have ruined a lot of lives. How? Ignorance. A lot of ministers are not teaching this thing today. Why? <laughs> they are being diplomatic in telling the whole fast. Because so many times, when you say these things, I'm saying now, some people will... You know, there is something raining now. Satan has raised some so-called ministers who will never take time to fast and pray and seek the face of God. And he's using them to corrupt our youths. Our youths that should be the backbone of prayer and intercession. Today, they are following motivational teachings. You didn't hear what I said. Motivational teaching. Who told you it's a gospel? Go and meet salesmanship. 
people doing marketing and see whether they don't know how to teach motivation. You don't need to be born again to teach motivational teaching. All you need is to be good in the social sciences. Today, they have used it. And you know the funny thing? Our youth like it so. And that's why it has affected the church. That's why we have a lot of Christians today who are in the church and nobody is born again. They know the word of God in the head, but their heart is empty of God. Motivational teaching. Can I also say something, my brother? They will tell you that a Christian cannot be cursed. <laughs> Can I ask you one? Which Christian cannot be cursed? Is it a Christian that is busy sowing seed of discord? Is it a pastor who will know who will you will invite into your another man's ministry? He will use his eyes and forget that the Bible says, Woe to him that if to be carnally minded is dead. Is that not what the Bible says? And then he will use his eyes, look for the big men, those he feel that he will collect their phone numbers, tell stories of things that happened in the moon. Only him was there when the God was coming from, from heaven to meet him. And then he will sweep the faith of those men. That is stealing. And hear me, when the other man of God, if he plays a curse, he will get him. And that's why many are, the Bible say, that's why many are sick and many die. Which minister? There are, which Christian cannot be cursed? Christian, so Bible say, mark them that so discord among brethren. He said there are six things God had. Seven that is abomination unto God. One of them, those that sow discord among brethren. If you are one of them, cause will pick you very well. Don't live by the word. Follow the scriptures. Why? The Bible has warned. A curse cannot come except there is a curse. In which case, if there is a curse, a curse will come. What am I saying? The Bible is saying in the book of Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2. As a bird by one ring, and as a swallow by flying, so the curse, curseless, it shall not come. What is the Bible saying? Except there is a reason. A curse cannot stick. I agree. But listen, if there is a reason, a curse will stick. One of the truths we must face is that the present day Christianity we are practicing is lacking in humility. It's lacking in integrity. And can I tell you, there is no brokenness. And Jesus said in the book of John, Jesus said, the enemy cometh, the devil cometh. John 14, verse 30. He said, the enemy cometh. The prince of the world cometh. He said, but he has nothing in me. What does that mean? If he has something in you, he will use it to steal your joy. So, there are things you need to avoid. Hear me. God gave us freedom. But this freedom, he warned us, it must not be used anyhow. It's there as a warning. Don't use it anyhow. Follow peace with all men. A lot of causes they are released when people embitter others. How do you look at a brother promise a sister he will marry her? Huh? And then, even, at, even let me use the word, practical one. And somewhere along the line, because the sister has agreed and they became very close. You know, when the sister, that's why we, don't, we say until they are married, they should stay distant. Once the closeness starts, and they begin to chat every night. The brother will not sleep. The sister will not sleep. They are chatting. The body chemistry will begin to change. Did you hear what I said? And they became weak to each other. At the end of the day, the sister did not realize she was in her fertility period. Or even if she doesn't, she knows. But she became pregnant. By the time they got to the brother, the parents said that she can't marry her. Why? They said they went to their church. They went to their church. And their church pastor said that the sister 
that the only thing inside her womb are females. That there is no man inside him. Brother, you see how illiterate pastors who didn't go to school give illiterate prophecy. Who is supposed to produce the man, the man inside the woman? Is it the... I, I, no! I, I, listen, that's why I don't like people giving prophecy here if they are not trained. They don't train. If, if you are receiving prophecy from all of them that are not trained, you are seeing it's on your head. I am free of all that sin. Are you hearing me? Let nobody, while the fellowship is going, he's going to touch you. He said, brother, uh, when the fellowship was going on, the Lord told me something. He's looking for attention. They are smart guys, and they are in every church. If he had God, he should go and tell your pastor. So that I will, we will discern it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Otherwise, a lot of people have been damaged through those useless prophecies. And then continue what I was saying. So what happened? This sister, the young man said that he's no more married her. Because our people didn't agree. Eh? The girl is already pregnant. What happens? The young man told the parents, what am I going to do? The girl is pregnant. The girl, if I leave her now, they say we will send you overseas. They packaged this boy, threw him out of Nigeria. Before the girl knew, the boy, girl was, the boy was out of Nigeria. And she doesn't even know where he is. I'm telling you a life story that happened in Oka here. And that sister backslided. You guess the first people that found her, a prostitute met her and picked her. And they told her, is that why you are crying? They said, come, let's forget the last two. In the night, we remove that thing. Is it because I come? Prostitute took her. Why the church sanctioned her and didn't sanction the brother? And this boy, this girl now went to the prostitute. In the night, they used a hanger, twisted it, put it to her private part, and pulled out the child. Took care of her, gave her accommodation, packaged her, and started. She joined the ministry of prostitution. Now, can I ask you, that brother, you also tell me a cost, costlet, shall not come. Eh? Can that boy be cursed? You have all kept quiet. I suspect all of you. I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid. You have kept quiet. You don't know. If it is you, will you take it? Uh, no, now you talk. Let me also tell you. In the same way, a sister, when you they chop a man, a brother, he's not, and maybe with the hope that you are going to marry her, he, that you marry him. And he spent on you, train you, send you to school. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And now you're a graduate. He no more fits you. <laughs> Palaba, you define. Speaking in tongue will not solve the problem. You see, listen. I am placing these things on the ground. Why? A lot of us are careless. So many things we take for granted. And if I record all the messages we receive on our heads of so many of our members, every Wednesday canceling. Some of them, you just feel like flogging them. You just feel like taking, eh? Flog them. Flog them. So my brother, let's pay attention to all these things. They are the thing. Let me show that that scripture a lot of them quote. They always quote uh, Numbers chapter 23, verse 23. What does the scripture say? That uh, there is no divination against Israel. Neither is there any uh, enchantment. Look at it. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel what God has wrought. That's what they always quote this scripture. There is no, nobody cannot be caused. A Christian cannot be caused. Shh, shut up. Pastor can be caused. Even a church can be caused. Go back to verse 21. So that you see where this scripture came from. They won't show you that one. God has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has God seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is their God. And he's with them. And the shout of a king, Jehovah, is among them. 
is the shout of Jehovah among you. Has God not beheld iniquity over your head? Huh? That's a real scripture. It is because God has not seen iniquity. Did not behold perverseness. That's why the Bible said, therefore, there is no enchantment against them. Neither because you can't cause righteousness. You can't throw the ball on the wall. Is somebody hearing me here? But if there is iniquity, he go penetrate. If there is perverseness, he go pierce. Some of you, after watching pornography, you don't know that the witch attacking you is watching you from, the no, from his mirror. I thought somebody is hearing me. And the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. A lot of professing Christians do not share the difference between clean and unclean. You see that in Ezekiel 22, verse 20. That's why there are too many so-called wisdom preachers causing us headache in the church. May God deliver the church. May the Lord deliver somebody here. Amen. I want to slow down and uh, so that we can go to prayers. So that tomorrow we can go a step further. We can pay attention to the different sources of causes. Today, I want you to look inside. First, you cannot handle some of these things if you are not properly born again. I am not doubting the fact that you have confessed that you are a Christian. But I want to ask you, since you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, yes, since you began to speak in tongues, have you changed? Have you changed? What kind of level, what kind of progressive change is in your life. If there is no progressive change, you are not born again. For he that is in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away and a new person has appeared. All the people around you in your father's house, in your office, in your yard, in this fellowship, can they look at you and say, no nyabangwe can they say really that you've changed? If they can't say it, sister, brother, you can't handle these powers. Do you know one particular case we were reading the other day? The man said, all the years he has been, he rekindles the covenant to make sure that his brother's daughters didn't get married. He was doing that for about 18 years. And he does it every, every month. He restrains them. And when you are dealing with such a wicked man, you think you, you, you can handle it with half-hazard Christianity. The man will tie you like a, like a dog baby. My brother, there is wickedness in the land. And in case you don't know, leave the 40, 30 years Christianity. You need them when it comes to holiness and righteousness. But when it comes to spiritual warfare, yesterday is different from today. These are the days of satanism. And the satanism now, all of them are around you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody called us, called me, um, called me today, a very, she was a member here. In fact, when I mentioned her case, my PA complained. He said, this person that will never, when you start her case, the next minute she will disappear. That was a complaint. And the result is, the enemy, she is almost passing away. Her statement, she is in pain. And she, she is getting tired. She can no more pray. Can no more read the Bible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So many of us, there is a door the enemy used to enter her life that way. And she is in a torture. I can't tell you what she's going through. But the simple language is torture. Torture! So my brother, we're in a warfare. And you know the what God told us? The Satan is dealing with her. is very living close by. Do you know that when you pack into a new house, the light you carry as a Christian, all the witches are all caught around there. They see it. It's only you who don't see. They see. And the first thing they are looking for 
is how to cage you. If they don't cage you, you won't allow them to go on astral war. Any astral journey, you can dislocate them and they somersault from the spirit realm. I thought somebody said hearing me. So, you need to be violent. You need to be prayerful. Change. Be committed to God. Let heaven recognize you. Stop playing hide and seek. At the end of the day, we, in fact, uh, look how you preach someone. He said they are gamblers with destiny. So many of you are gamblers with your destiny, with your life. You are playing a gamble. Bow your head. Let us pray. I want you to look into your life first and foremost. The Bible said if you judge yourself, you will not be judged. Are you really a Christian? Like this person I talked about. She's our member, she's, but she's, not, she's a number here, but she's not our member. Honestly. And now, after celebrating her, her pain, they can't handle it. You don't rob Peter to pay Paul. You don't rob Peter to pay Paul. You need to be straight. Talk to God. Who are you? Probably, you are from a family where idolatry is hidden all along. And you have never been serious in crying to God for the iniquity of your fathers. Nehemiah was a prophet of God. As a prophet of God, the Bible said Nehemiah went to God and he cried and said to God, I and my father's house, we have sinned. If Nehemiah, a prophet of God, could pray that prayer, who is your father and your mother? Why wouldn't you repent? He was even a prophet. Are you a prophet? He was not repentant of his own sin. The sins, the wickedness of his fathers. Why? Because he, had, he appreciated the, that the God we serve visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation because they hate him. They hate him. My brother, lay an enduring foundation. Lay a sustaining foundation. Let your Christianity have be broad based. Reconsecrate your life to Jesus. I always tell Christians the most powerful prayer is repentance prayer. Why? Cry for mercy. Until mercy comes, the presence of God is not available to break the yoke. Probably, you may not know, your own problem is anger. You have taken it, it is your nature. We must fear you and respect your anger. I'm sorry. The Bible says the anger of a man can never work out the righteousness of God. So, you better <laughs> deal with this thing. Otherwise, you'll be managing your life. You are a gambler with destiny. Probably your own problem is that you are in a church, but you are not, you don't, you are not useful to God. You are not in the prayer team. You are not an intercessor. You are not in the usher. Nothing. Not in the choir. You just come and one bench and go. That's why Jesus caused you to know him. Don't you know the Bible says that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemy, may serve him. You must find something. Find somewhere and serve the Lord. Like our secretary will always say. Find somewhere and serve. Your own may be pride. Very quiet pride. It's so more painful when you see people. Ego, they don't have. Intelligent, they are not wonderful. And yet, their arrogance is taller than the whole of this beauty. Bible, God said, I resist the proud. God said, Debase, reduce the proud. My brother, be humble. Leave your pride. 
if you want to go forward. If you want to have God behind you. Probably you are one of those who discuss today. You are talking about Kumuyi. Tomorrow it is Ademoye. Next tomorrow, one day she, one man. Listen to me. You are damaging your life. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. That scripture is still there. Even Miriam, senior sister, prophet, when he touched Moses, he broke a curse. Brought a curse. Aaron, high priest of Israel, <laughs> he was slaughtered like a chicken on top of the mountain before his children, before the son. God said, undress him, take away the dress, put it on his son. Don't make your life a ridicule. You must learn to respect grace so that you don't end in disgrace. Repeat after me. Say, my father, my God. My father, my I've had your word. Every curse. Every curse. Of fruitless hard labor. Of fruitless hard labor. Evil repayment. Evil repayment. Delay in marriage. Delay in marriage. Or marriage problem. Or marriage problem. Every every curse. Every curse. Of chronic servitude. Of very servitude. Reproductive problems. Reproductive problems. Premature death. Premature death. Poverty. Poverty. Or hindrances. Or hindrances. I break them. I break them. Over my life. Over my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In the prayer. name of Jesus, every cause of poverty, in the name of Jesus, every cause of walking out like, like an elephant and eating like ant, every cause of setback, every cause of premature death, I break them over my life. I break them over my business. Jesus. I break them Jesus. over my family. Jesus. I break in them. The of cause Jesus. of setback. The of cause Jesus. of disappointment. Every cause of failure. Cause of, failure. Every cause of, cause of sickness. Every cause, cause of disease. Every cause of infirmity. Every cause of sadness. Cause of sorrow. Cause of sorrow. Cause of bad market. Cause of loss. I cast my life. I cast my business. I break it. 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 Every cause of failure. Every cross of worship, every cross of people, every cross of barriers, every cross of shame, every cross of despair, over my life, over my destiny, I break it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I break it by fire, I break it by thunder, by fire, every cross of fear, every cross of failure, every cross of disappointment, I swear to God, 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 Cross of poverty, cross of pain, my God, cross of intercessor, all of them my life. I break it, I break it, by fire, cross of paradise, cross of cross of failure, every cross of rejection, against my life, against my business, let me be broken, 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 cross of rejection, cross of death, cross of disappointment, Father and our Lord, I pray for this audience. We have had your word. Lord, as we leave, let your spirit take hold of each and every one of us. Amen. Help us to know what we need to know. Areas you need to convict us, convict us very well. Amen. Father, this week we ask for a special visitation. Amen. You promise us that this year is our year of divine and supernatural enlargement. Please, oh God, we know that the year is still very much around. Enlarge our course. Amen. Prosper your people. Amen. Open new doors. Announce us to our world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.